Welcome back, all my 40K fanatics out there. I'm DJ here with Tim's Nation. And I want to start this video, my AdMech video, the AdMech army that I will be facing off against Lane later today. And what is it that Lane is going to be bringing? Lane is going to be bringing Iron Hands. My question that I want to impose on you guys is and are Iron Hands back in the meta. It seems like as we go on with 40K, there are a couple of consistents, and one of them is that Iron Hands will always rise up and become a main event army. And after Lane's GT this weekend, which I'm not going to spoil anything of that, that is Lane's, he can talk about it, but the one thing is that the GT is the reason that Lane is bringing Iron Hands today, because anyone who's followed what I'm trying to do with the AdMech so far, I am trying to make AdMech a contender a contender for top tables, a contender at a tournament. This is the challenge that has been issued by Sam Dayton. This is what needs to happen. And if I cannot get by Iron Hands, if the weight of the Iron Hands is too much, that could pose issues. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm okay with taking a loss. A loss with this army is not enough to put it on the shelf or scrap the current design. But what is, is, is it possible to turn that loss into a win? If the answer is no, that's where there's going to be some risks. If I get completely pushed back and cannot respond. Two sides of the coin on this one. A lot of the abilities that the Iron Hands have, I could possibly be able to play into for how they interact, how they activate because of the fact of how much my weapons are spread out over my army. I can whittle something down before hitting it with one of my heavier targets. And that's the kind of hopeful point I'm at. Not to mention I do have a rather large army so I can cover a lot of the field and possibly make it too many targets to really be able to answer all the time. We'll see. It's definitely going to be a, this is the next hurdle I have to jump. And if I can't get by this, then it's definitely go back to the drawing board and rethink a lot of this design. Now, I have made a couple changes since the last list, but for the most part, a lot of it stayed the same. I had a W into Votan. There was a couple things I didn't like, so I made a few changes. And I'm going to show you those first in the list and then start going into the rest of the units. And I hope you stick around to hear, even if you've heard some of the beginning of it, because over time, I've been able to develop a little bit of a deeper understanding of some of these ad mech units and how some of this stuff can interact and work. And it's interesting. There's a lot of ways that this army can really play the mission. And I may be at a point of near to getting tabled in some games, but be able to win just because of the sheer volume of units with early move mechanics that I can put on the field that have a very strong defense. All right, let's jump over into this army. This is what I'm going to be playing tonight against Lane and the Iron Hands. All right, here she is in all of her 108 model glory. The previous list was 109 models. We've dropped down by one by cutting two and adding one. For the most part, the list is the same as what I was playing before. The change, well, the first change is that I dropped the Scatros. So I may have played the Scatros kind of wrong in my last matchup against Votan, where I moved one out and was it got overwatched early and I lost it. Probably a scenario I could have gotten around with like, you know, just not being within 12 inches. But that did allow other units to move a little more freely without having the fear of the overwatch. That overwatch fear was looming no matter what. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, feel free to check out the last game where I played this list in Votan. Uh, and early on in the matchup, I got my lost one of my Scatros to an Overwatch that was pretty inevitable from bikes. It wasn't a matter of what, it was just a matter of which unit was going down, or not if, it was when. Needless to say, I was not impressed with the Scatros. I still had one left over. He shot. Uh, the Battle Shock thing was a null effect. Cool little gimmick, but didn't play out for him. Uh, and no real damage, especially going into an army like Votan, which did have characters that I could have put in some work to. Uh, the only thing that really did well into characters was the arc rifle, uh, um, sniper rifles that are attached to my infantry. So those are sticking around. 
All right, so I dropped this both the Scatros, 65 points a piece. They couldn't take any of my enhancements that I wanted out there just floating. And uh, yeah, they, they went out for 65 points a piece. They're pretty expensive, one of the more expensive units, especially considering that some of my uh, five-man infantry, my Sicarian, are the same cost as that one three-wound model. So what I put in there, well, I went from one Dune Crawler to two and swapped out their guns. Uh, I'm so happy with myself that actually when I built these guys, I did happen to magnetize two of their weapons. So I was able to just swap the guns off them and start working on new eradication beams. One of the things that I lack is I lack some anti-tank firepower, uh, high AP, high damage. Now, while these things aren't the greatest, uh, just because of the sheer number of shots, the force to hit, those can be rough. But you do have some of the buffs, such as the heavy buff that these weapons come with inherently, uh, that can help if these guys sit still, long range, so it is plausible. And there may not be the first thing that you want to go at, even though they have the big gun on them, they may not be the primary target that needs to be taken down with some of the other options in the list. In a nutshell, the um, Icarus Arrays, I was able to do a lot with one Dune Crawler and an Icarus Array, and I was able to fire that thing multiple times. So even if these things are on the move and only hitting on fours and dealing with that issue alone, that high damage shot is feels like a lot more value than what they were currently going with. Not to mention, for some odd reason, this gun is Blast. I have it, It's a weird one. It's just, okay, here, just just have blast on your eradication beam. I guess I get it. It's supposed to be shooting through. And I guess if you have a larger squad, it can blast through and hit more guys in a straight line as a beam. But okay, sure. I got blast. I'll take it. That's a win. So those are what, that was the new inclusion. So that took me down one model because I lost two, but I gained one. And uh, yeah, that's the only new change. Now, as far as everything else in the army, one thing that these Dune Crawlers synergize very well with is that they give a four up invulnerable save to all battle line models, specifically models, within six inches. So I'll take seven. Thank you. I have seven battle line units. First up is my Rangers. These are five 10 man squads. All of them have sniper rifle, arc rifle, and plasma. Two of the squads will be led by a marshal. Three of them are just will not be. Now, these guys all have a scout move, which we're going to talk about in a minute when we get to the enhancements and the enhancements I'm taking. But each one of these units can all move six inches pregame. And that's after we know who goes first. On top of it, we'll also have two 10-man squads of Vanguard. They also have a sniper rifle, because why not? I, I really do like this thing. I mean... The fact that it comes with the squad for free and it can precision a character, I mean, it's not reliable to say that's my entire strategy, but man, that's going to be a very, that could be a very, very game changing moment to be able to snipe a character out of a unit that an opponent thought would they, they'd have and they need to move around for the game. That'd be huge. One of the Vanguard will have a marshal. And he will have an enhancement. Again, we're going to talk about those in a second here. Now, with these seven units, we have two enhancements. And I guess we'll talk about these now. So the first enhancement is one that allows me to redeploy three units. So I can pick my three units that infiltrate and pick them up and bring them to a safer position or I can put them on a more forward position. On top of that, if any of those units are already in the perfect position moving forward, I can pick up other squads like the Rangers that do not have characters and put them on the front lines and then scout move them six inches forward. Both are different abilities. Both would activate individually. So that allows me to put a lot of forward pressure. And then as well, reposition myself defensively if I go second so I can make my opponent burn their first turn, which tends to be a lot easier in this edition than in others. Uh, the I did mention that I have two other infiltrating units, so we'll jump over into them. And those are my Sakarian infiltrators. So these guys are five mans, 65 points, super cheap. Tasers, little fledged bastard. I love the blaster. Being able to pick up 25 dice and look at my opponent and go, okay, I have 
25 shots. And they're all surprised, like, how, how many shots? Five apiece? What? And then when you say they're strength three, they suddenly realize, oh, okay, so you're wounding my toughness four thing on fives. Okay. Oh, oh, oh I take three saves? Sure. Moving on. But the infiltrate abilities that these guys have, um, the fact that they got stealth, uh, their move characteristic. These guys are units that can score secondaries that typically you can't score on turn one. An early engage on all fronts. Uh, an early ex um, behind enemy lines. Uh, these are things that they can do. This army spreads out nicely and is able to score secondaries early that normally you can't. So I do like that factor. Now, as far as Sakarian units, we also have two five-man squads of the Traxi. These are my deep striking units. So where I have two squads that infiltrate, as well as a squad of Vanguard that is going to infiltrate and also have a scout move. I didn't mention that they get to infiltrate and scout. Um, the This unit, the Taraxi, are able to deep strike in with Flamers. Now, I'm taking the Sterilizers. I know a lot of people like the Sky Stalker. I look at the Sky Stalker, I look at its gun, and I feel like it's shooting a nerf gun. It's never going to do any damage to anything that matters. Yes, it can move away, but it's never going to do any damage to anything that matters. I don't feel like that extra move really amounts to much, except, ooh, look, I can jump behind a wall. And then after you jump behind the wall, you might go your opponent into moving, charging, and being closer to the rest of your army by going after those guys. Yes, they can jump all the way back to a battle line unit. But now you're losing forward board position. In a lot of scenarios, I'd rather lose the sterilizers on a forward board position than have to try to push through a unit that I might not be able to push through with what's on whichever flank I'm getting hit. Uh, these guys also, because they deep strike, allow me to, again, score secondaries that in other situations might not be possible. I do have a strat that lets me pick up two Sicarian infiltra uh, infantry units, which would be the Taraxi and the uh, infiltrators, or one Skatari infantry unit, so the rangers and everything else. So for one command point, I can pick two of these units up and bring them back down. And since the Taraxi deep strike, that's a very, very nice option for them as well. So I don't feel like the bounce away is as necessary, especially when this is a really strong flamer unit. The Flamer has gotten nerfed. It doesn't hit as hard as it used to in previous editions. But with the strats for bonuses to wound, with the boosts to wound rolls if you're near uh, battle line units, which I have a ton, these guys can do a little bit better than it looks like on their initial data sheet. They're not going to clear the world. They're not really that threatening. But at least it's not non-existent, which is where I feel like the Sky Stalker's weapon is. Now, we do have one Mechanicus unit that affects off of my battle line very nicely that I haven't talked about, and that is my Breachers. Breachers are a critical point, and this is going to be huge, especially going into Iron Hands, because I hope he does not immediately remove these and that I can protect them till I can spring them. With how many battle line units I have, these guys do not need any character support, in my opinion. Their initial ability is just to re-roll all hits within six as long as they're within six inches of a battle line unit. That is my army. So as long as they're within six inches of my army, they can re-roll all their hits. That's shooting, that's combat. They have arc rifles. That's going to be it. That's a heavy hit to tanks. It's not enough to completely clear some of the Iron Hand vehicles, which is what comes into some of the arc rifles in my other units, being able to whittle them down so that I can then hit them with these arc rifles and really hurt and not get shot back and lose a squad of breachers in return. Uh, and then in combat, they have the hydraulic claw, high damage, high strength to, again, hit things very hard. Um, one other Mechanicus unit that we have is a character, and he's going to be wandering around with my Dune Crawlers. This is my Engine Seer. Engine Seer does better by himself because of the low op ability as long as he's near a vehicle. And he's going to be giving my Doom Crawlers some of their wounds back, as well as kicking a Feel No Pain uh, onto those units as well, which is huge, especially since I have a strat that allows me to save the strat. Now, 
he also has one other vehicle unit that he could possibly be healing. And that is a unit that literally has my blood, sweat, and tears in it from fixing repairs. I have been up and down the world with these guys, and that is my Dragoons. And to be honest, I really do like these things and think they have a place right now in 40k because of Tank Shock. Seriously, I just need a bumper sh sticker that says Tank Shock on it at this point. This is like my trademark strat at this moment right now. You can, Lane will even agree. But this unit can tank shock, and it is a unit. doesn't mean anything more for dice. It doesn't mean anything more for that. It means more for just mortal wound damage that this unit can put out on top of its AP2-2 damage lance weaponry that it has. Now, things like dreadnoughts can reduce that damage down, and re damage reduction does kind of hurt. But this is still an impacting unit for its point cost, and its large base size allows it to play all sorts of movement games and movement shenanigans. In return, they're actually a very bulky hull with their toughness 7, 6 wounds, and a 3-up, 5-up. They also have access to get targeted by a stratagem that gives them a 5-up feel no pain. Anytime this unit's targeted with a strat, I can gain the command points back. So this unit, it's value for me to hit this unit with stratagems, especially early on in a turn, so that I can gain that command point back and be able to access another defensive strat for another unit later on. So that ability is actually very, very relevant. All right, summarizing this army, back away and look at it one more time. Now, all of my ranger units, my five ranger units, are all have ignore cover, while the two vanguard units are going to have the CP regen uh, uh, different abilities. Broad spectrum data tether. Thank you. Sorry. These units will be covering the field and comprising most of my just trying to get my aura of control over. Uh, with things like the Heavy Doctrina, these guys can actually be pretty defensive. They, with the, the stealth, because of my army's special ability, because of the Hunter Cohort, they're a little bit tougher to kill. They take a little bit more to take down just a basic Ranger Squad. As far as characters are concerned, the only characters that are joining my units are the Marshals. And after the first game turn, their enhancements don't matter. They burn and they're done. One is going to be with the Vanguard, as I mentioned briefly, so I'll state it again, that I put one of them with, and that's the one that's going to have the Infiltrate and the Scout move. That one is uh, going to be on the front lines, so it can get picked up, move back, and that's one of my other marshals. One of the other marshals in one of my ranger squads has the enhancement to pick up those three units. Again, those things all will trigger at the beginning of the game, so I get their value, and then it turns into a character that gives full rerolls to hit to the unit that it's with. So I have three units that have full rerolls to hit, one being a vanguard on the front line. If I can get onto some infantry with that squad, that squad could actually hit pretty hard. The other two Ranger squads are going to be ones that I'm going to try and protect a little more. I'm going to have defensive secondaries and defensive positioning that I'm going to want some of my infantry in, and that's going to be their role. More so, it's because later into the game, having full rerolls to hit on that unit is going to be huge. Now, I am going to have to put all the infantry out there. I am going to have to bring everything to bear. But during the early turn points when units are going to be exposed and hit, I'd much rather keep the ones with the marshal alive and put them in the best possible positions to have them in the late game. Now I do have one squad of Vanguard that doesn't have a character with it. And that one is going to be kind of a wild card. While I would want it on the front line and I do want it to uh, make moves and kind of wall out in some matchups, I need to get the Rangers in position first and I need to get them away from walls and corners. So this Vanguard unit may be that sacrificial lamb that needs to go into a position and hold the backfield. With the Doom Crawlers now having such a long range gun, the Doom Crawlers can hold a lot of backfield areas better for me than the Vanguard can. And their coverage is good. They're a very large base. So I do have three good units to do that with. The last game against the Votan, I did get stuck in a position where one of my breachers was kind of held back in a limited angle because I was trying to zone out deep strike from a position that I hopefully can avoid now with some of the units such as the Dune Crawler being where they are in this list. Okay, so that is the list. There's not much else to say. I went very 
in depth with what I'm trying to accomplish with this. So all that's left is throw it on the table and hope for the best. So yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Fingers crossed that I can handle this. I think I have the weapons. I have hopes. I'm, I don't, I'm not feeling like I'm behind the eight ball, but I think this is a long shot and I'm not that good at pool. So we'll see though. We'll see. Uh, I'm, I'm been, might be pleasantly surprised. Like I said, I do have a lot of guns and with some of the strats and abilities that trigger versus a target here, a target there, I can spread stuff out enough that it's like, when do you trigger that ability? And I might already be able to impact damage. For example, uh, you may not want to pop a defensive strat because I'm only shooting at you with one arc rifle. Okay. So you don't pop that, but then everything else comes in there and suddenly I'm doing nickel and dime damage. Then I hit it again, and now you decide to spend that, sh that command point and spend that stratagem because I hit it too hard with an arc rifle from a ranger squad. And now everything else I know can bulk into something else because you can't use said defensive strat again uh, that, that, that phase. So those are things that are going through my head with like how my army's positioned. Some of the concerns are, though, in that same, with that same sentiment, Things like the Breachers and the Doom Crawler are going to kind of guarantee specific targets, especially if I'm going to protect them nicely. They're only really going to be able to engage one. So some of those defensive stratagems, it's they're either going to have to just try and hit through them or not make that play and hold back. How long can I hold back? Especially with this army, that one of the biggest strengths is how fast and how far I can cover the board quickly. All right. Well, that's about that about wraps it up. Only thing left to say is thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you again soon.